you know, Brett, we were just talking about this ironically. Why is it that you think you see kids over and over again? What, you know, in your experience of working with these kids, are you ever surprised that you see them over and over again? I was at the beginning. I, I, I saw what goes on here. I saw the rooms. I saw how they reacted. And then they keep coming back. They keep coming back. They tell me eight out of ten come back, eight out of ten. I didn't believe it at first. Eight out of ten, that's a pretty high percentage. Yeah. And then I see the same kids over and over and over. But I don't know if I told you this before. We get them here. They change a little bit, and then we ship them right back to the same environment they came from. So what's going to happen? Their peers have a lot more influence on them than we do, is what I see. Does it surprise you that detention and court aren't a deterrent for some of these kids? Yes, yes. Because they, they come back, they're crying, they're upset, and they don't like it here, and then they get out. And I guess the, the power of the peer pressure is a lot greater than what we do here. So do you find that the kids, when they are here, um, I think a lot of people assume when they see the you know, razor wire, you know, that's a lot of bad kids behind that. I know. No, I'm just doing yeah. this between questions. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bad kids behind that razor wire. But what would you want people to know about the kids that are here? Well, the kids here, we have bad kids, but I would say most of them are good kids but they're just misdirected they haven't had they haven't had that structure in their life and they like structure once they get here believe it or not we'll have some kids that have been, done some really terrible things but they get here and they are very good because they they have finally have structure and they will listen if you're stern with them and you tell them what to do and they like that now some obviously don't like it and it's usually the older ones that have been through the system over and over again and they just keep coming back and coming back but the, I, I find a lot of kids like the structure but they've never had it. I'll give you a second. There you go. I'm just adjusting the okay. What? What's your, how do you personally try and get through to kids? What makes you want to get through to these kids? And kind of what do you employ to help get through to them? Well, I try to use examples of kids that have been here, especially the kids in the gangs and kids that, um, like for instance, on my wall I have pictures. And I, I don't know if I should have a wall of fame or a wall of shame, but the kids will ask me, well, you know, who's this, who's this, who's this? And then there's about 15 kids up there that are dead, that have been through the system, that have been out, and, and they're dead. And, and, and uh, I tell them that, and they think, and they look, and, they, and I think that does get to them. But uh, the biggest thing I think here is uh, they just need somebody to pay attention to them. They've never had that. And that it goes back to that structure. It goes back to being loved, mom, dad. I tell you, Dan Dockage uh, spoke last night at a sportsmanship uh, <clears throat> dinner over here in uh, Cherville, and he was awesome. He was absolutely awesome. He said, you know, thank your coach, thank your parents, and especially you kids in the, in the audience, thank your, your guardian. Give them a hug and tell them thank you. They've never had that. They've never had anybody pay that attention. They, they can say they love or they want to be with. They've never had it. Tell me about your personal feelings. Say you're walking down the hall and suddenly here comes a kid that you've seen two, three, four times and they're back again. Do you just sort of, you know, give a sigh and say, what's your, your, you know, your personal emotions when you see kids come back? Uh, uh, you can start by saying my personal feelings. My personal feelings are absolutely, I, I do get kind of emotional. It's kind of like reading in the paper where a boy was in here and then he, he's murdered or he gets killed. And, uh, and it hurts. And then you see the boy coming back or the girl coming back, um, like Ruby, can I use her name? Oh, oh, yeah, Ruby, for instance. You know, I, I didn't think Ruby would be back. And then she was back two, three times before she got shipped off to girl school. And uh, she's, a, she's a good kid. Just, and, and she's got a loving family, and, and that's, it's baffling, actually. Why? Why can't this girl just get into society and just have and be a teenager? These kids grow up so fast. It's unbelievable. You know, we have 12, 13, 14-year-olds that have done more and seen more than you and I. That really has. And, and I try to put myself in their place, but really I can't. I've never been through what they've been through. So that's hard. That's hard because I, I get through to a lot of these kids, but I've never been there.
And I even tell them that. I don't know what I would do if I was in your situation. I'm being totally honest. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but this is what you should do. But I've never been there. But since I've been working here, I, I have a couple of gentlemen that used to work for me at uh, car dealerships, and a couple were high-ranking gang, uh, in gangs, and uh, they've helped me, actually. They've explained it to me, and they've been there. And, and I, I actually want to bring them in here to talk to these kids in the future to get that set up. Because it seems like a lot of kids just sort of feel like, oh, nobody's going to understand me. They don't, you know. Uh, you're exactly right. This is what we do in my neighborhood, or this is how right. I survive. This is life, you know. And they, I've, there'll be kids that will say, I know I'm going to die. I mean, this is 15, 16-year-old kids saying, I know I'm going to die. I'm not going to live long. That's the way it is, Mr. Brett. That's the way it is. And I'm sitting there, that's the way it is. That's not the way it is. It doesn't have to be that way, but they've never had anything else. So what makes you come back every day? Because I think that... Um, <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's a light piece of Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people tell me, well, I, you know, it's depressing. I would just give up working with these kids because obviously nothing's helping. What makes you come back every day? Well, I come back every day. I like it here. I, I, I'm, it's a challenge. I want to help these kids. I want to do more. I haven't figured out how exactly I'm going to do that, but I'm learning more and more and more. And uh, when I do figure it out, and, and along the way, I am helping kids. I, I really feel like I am, but I want to do more. And I haven't figured out exactly what it's going to take to go to that next level. You were a big time college basketball player, obviously. You know, you've met a lot of people, you know a lot of influential people. Would you like to see more people kind of like yourself? I mean, you're an imposing guy, which probably... It's very helpful. Is helpful in, in, in this thing. Right, just my, just my, 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 my size right. and my, my demeanor. I'm, I'm not a mean person. I don't have to be mean. And I think I, I get the kids' respect because of the way I act and I carry myself. And when I walk in the room, I know I am imposing. I, it's just a... It's just the way I am, I guess. I don't know. What would you tell other people that you know about why a job like this is so rewarding versus being on Wall Street or being in corporate America? Those are two different worlds. What would you say about the rewards of this? Well, I don't know if I, I explained to you why I was here last time, but because uh, I used to trade commodities at the Mercantile Exchange. And believe it or not, I went from playing basketball at DePaul to the commodities world to this. And really, they're not that they're not that different because we've got the kids in trouble in the basketball, the grades, the drugs, the athletes. And then I go to the mercantile exchange, same thing. Young guys, a lot of money, drugs, alcohol, okay, same problems. And then I come here and it's the same problems with all three levels. That's amazing. I would have really never is. made the connection. It really is. And I tell people that and they're just like, oh my gosh, he's right. But the same thing, you go from athletes to young men with a lot of money that are successful on Wall Street, same thing. I think I, they get bored. I, I, I can't figure it out myself, but maybe they get bored. Athletes become successful. Okay, now I have all this money. I can have whatever I want. Now they start doing illegal things because they're bored. I think the same thing happened on Wall Street. Or they try to stay up. They try, they want, everybody wants more, more, more. I think it all goes back to greed. Yeah. It really does. And then here, same thing. Here's a young man, he has nothing. He goes to school. This kid has everything, I have nothing. I, I want it. Right. And they'll do whatever they have to get it. But it's rewarding working with these kids because when you I'm do get it. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> My shoulders are needing a break. You didn't know that to be part of Calamari, you know, we have to be out of work out every morning. <laughs> have one this big last, shoulder, one last, little shoulder. Yeah, this will <laughs> be the last question. That's okay. Last question. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, I just, it's getting shaky. That's not, that's good. Okay. So I would imagine the reward is when you do get through to a kid. Talk absolutely, to absolutely. I was, I went to Chili's with my family and there's about 20 people in line. I'm getting ready to turn around and I hear from the, 
front of the line, Mr. Brett, Mr. Brett, Mr. Brett, how are you? It was a, a girl that was here that went to girls' school, came back. She was she had the job. She was doing well. She was doing well in school. And, you know, took me to the front of the line, set my family right away, and, and told me that uh, you helped me a lot. I was you were a big influence. I got my life in order. I'm no longer doing those things I was doing. I'm off drugs, and that is rewarding. That is very rewarding. That's happened to me in several instances. Probably more rewarding than quitting at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. at yeah, the mercantile. Right, huh? exactly. And an another thing is when I'm walking down the street or I'm in the mall or I'm at the gas station, as soon as I hear Mr. Brett, I know. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, here we go. But it's usually all good. I haven't had a bad experience yet with a child outside of the juvenile center. Okay. Uh, October 30th. Ooh. Who's your judge? Judge Miller. Uh -huh. So what did you come in on? Uh, I had a bench warrant for not coming to court. Everybody we've been filming has a bench warrant for not coming to court. I had so, an excuse though. What? I was across the street. You were across the street? And then they brought you back over here? Yeah. Uh, Why did they take you over there if you were 17? Because I had a dog charge. No. Oh. Yeah, because they can do that if you're 16. Yeah. Depending. So how'd you get out of that and come over here? I bonded out, and then uh, I was still being held like three days after I bonded out. And then I called my mother, asked what was going on. Then she said that I had a warrant for over here. And then so the next day I was sitting in my land on my bed. I didn't know how long I was going to how much more I was going to have to stay over there. So then they just called my name over the uh, intercom. And usually when they do that, that means we going home. Because uh, any other time, they just come to your section and get you. But then yeah, I thought I was going home. I got downstairs and everything. Gave them their property. I never got my property back. And uh, the guy from over here, he was sitting on the bench. But I was wondering what he was doing down there. And he told me to turn around. Put me in handcuffs. I'm thinking, like, dang, they need to do all this to release me. And he shackled my feet. And we walked to the garage. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, uh, you got a warrant for over here. I'm like, man. So I was supposed to go to court the next day, the next morning. But I never did. And they said that I was supposed to, but nobody still never did nothing about it. Then I was here, like, a week and some days. Then I finally got a court date. Mm. So, so what were your original charges? For over here? Mm -hmm. uh, Burke. But uh, the judge was going to dismiss the case <coughs> because they didn't have enough evidence. You have talked to more kids who've had, I've been filming for 10 years and I've talked to more kids who've had burglary cases and I always think to myself, how do you, how do you ever think? It was with a school. How, why would I burglarize a school? Maryville High School? Yeah. Why would I burglarize a school? So somebody broke into Maryville High School and then... No, somebody, um, they like wasn't supposed to be there unless you was like on the wrestling team or the basketball team. And then a lot of people's property came up missing. And I was walking, I was like, by Hidden Lake, you know what that said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was walking down the street. And the officer stopped me. It was me and my brother. And then it was like, um, what's your name? I gave my name and everything. So we was just coming from the mall. We just got off the bus. And we was finna go like, who was going to Ponderosa to fill our applications, because that's what we were doing. We was just going around filling our applications. So and he stopped us and he put us in the car and then drove us up to Maryville. And then it was like a few students and like a teacher. And then they was like, uh, I, I, that kind of looked like him or whatever, or whatever. So they was like, you fit the description. We just gonna take you in and, and do it. like, you know. So they took us in, got all our information. Then I was at Maryville Police Station for about two hours. Then I came here, and I was here for about two hours. They was getting all my information. They took my picture. Then I was waiting in the hotel for like 30 minutes. And then my mama came, and I thought it was all over. And like a couple of days later, we got a letter in the mail saying I had to come to court. So we, we went to court the first time. And then they just told us, they didn't say nothing about the case. They just, we went in, and it was like, come back on this day. So we came the second time. Then that's when two of the students um, and the police officer who had arrested me came. Mm -hmm. Then they was like, did y'all see him? And they was like, no. And they was like, did everybody get their property? 
And they was like, yes. And then they was like, then what's going on then? And then it was still one more person that had to be there. And then he was like, I'm going to dismiss this case because they didn't show up. And plus, y'all don't have enough evidence, you know. So all I had to do was just show up so the case could be dismissed. And I got arrested three days before I um, had to go to court. Then I asked them, did they know that I had to go to court? And they said, yeah, but come to find out, they didn't. So now that you're here, it's Ruby's. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Uh, we were filming with that girl. Uh, so now you're here and you're in class. Tell me about being in class with Mr. Brett. Oh, Mr. Brett, cool teacher. I have, I, I would like to have him as a regular teacher on the Alps. He's the only one that I met so far and it seemed like he really cared have any concerns. Yeah, he seems to relate well to all the kids. So why, why, what do you like about him? Why is know. he a good teacher? Because he's different from everybody else. He's just a fun guy. <laughs> Did you know he's a former basketball player? Hmm? Did you know he's a former basketball player? I kind of figured that. I ain't never asked him. No, I didn't know. So what does he do with you guys that you think is fun? Tell me a little bit about what your interaction is with him. I barely know him, but I don't know. He gives us more freedom than, uh, than other teachers. And, you know, he's just like a good mentor. Yeah. That's all I can really say. What does that mean to you, having a mentor? Because, you know, a lot of Somebody people... look up to, you know. And, and if you could just start by saying, to me, being a mentor means, mm -hmm. say it that, just say, like, to me, being a mentor means. To me, being a mentor <laughs> means, like, good role model, you know, somebody to look up to, show you the good and, you know, good and bad. So are there certain people, for whatever reason, that can seem to relate to you guys better than others? Like, Mr. Brett seems to be one He's of one of them, yeah. He's one of them, what? One out of the few. These, like 90% of these people just, like don't care. And he does. <laughs> Mr. Brett. So is this one of your favorite places to come then? Yeah, this is my favorite place to come. Better than a day room, better than the other classes. We only got three though. So if you could just say, you know, if there's one place in LCJC I'd like to come, it's... Mr. Brett's. Okay. So just go ahead and say that as a whole sentence. If there's one place in LCJC I'd like to come, it'd be Mr. Brett's. He's a fun-loving teacher. Cool guy. Seems like there need to be more Mr. Brett's around. Yeah. Seems like there need to be more Mr. Brett. Everybody can learn something from Mr. Brett. How about on the outside, like how important do you think mentoring is? And you know, there's a lot of programs where people can volunteer and mentor for kids that don't have as much support at home or in the community. Is that something you think would be helpful? Yeah, it would be very helpful. Do, like, What's missing on the outside and why kids get in trouble? Like what, what, what could people provide you guys with? Coming from um, bad homes, not having, sometimes not having both parents around. Um, running with the back, wrong crowds. Yes. That's, that's correct. Wrong crowds. Trying to fit in. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. So, what could help you on the outside? People like Mr. Brett. Mm -hmm.